24th, 2017, the Friends of the Whitman Park and the town of Whitman dedicated an American elm tree to the memory of former state, although I should say late state Senator Ned Kirby. And I have June O'Leary here who is going to tell us a little bit about how the Friends of the Park decided to do this. Well, I don't think anybody that ever met Ned wouldn't forget him or not love him. He, he was just a very personable, very wonderful man. And when he passed away, it was a great loss to everyone that knew him. And we were trying to think of a way to memorialize him. And then we thought of the tree. We have a tree program, so we thought we'll plant a tree. So we thought about what kind of a tree, and then I called Bruce Martin down to the DPW and told him what we wanted to do, and he said, oh, you're in luck because we have a, we're gonna get trees this week, and one of them is a, an elm. And we thought, oh, Ned was so tall and so lanky. He looked like a tree with feet, and he was, He'd come to the band concerts and he'd run or he'd walk real quickly and all that, and you could not ignore him in any way. Uh, and he and his wife, Mary Alice, were just fantastic people, and we, we really wanted to do something special. And that's something that will be in a spot for him for, we hope, 100 years at least. Now let's take a look at the dedication ceremony that was held in Whitman Town Hall on that Saturday morning in 2017. Uh, the town would like to recognize Ned for his many countless uh, contributions to the town. And the Board of Selectmen has prepared a proclamation signed by all members. We have Randy Martin here, Brian Hamilton, and Dan Salvucci. And uh, certainly they're signatories to this, so I'd like to read the proclamation. We're out. Edward Ned P. Kirby, born January 10, 1928, was raised in Whitman, attended Whitman schools, and graduated from the College of the Holy Cross in 1949 and Boston College Law School in 1952, going on to serve his country as an Army JAG officer during the Korean War era, followed by Captain in the Army Reserves. And whereas Ned P. Kirby, being the youngest Republican in the House when elected in 1961, devoted himself to serving the people and towns of the 7th, 7th Plymouth District in the Massachusetts House of Representatives for six years. And whereas Ned Kirby, after serving three terms as state representative, served as an elected member of the Plymouth County Commission from 1969 to 1976, during which time he founded the Plymouth County Development Council, spearheaded the acquisition of conservation sites, and gained state backing for a county-wide radio system for police communications for all towns within the county. And whereas Ned was elected to the Massachusetts State Senate in 1981, where he served six terms, serving in the Senate Ways and Means, Transportation, and Judiciary Committees, and his third assistant minority leader from 1983 to 1989, and 1991 to 1993, was appointed Administrative Law Judge by Governor William Well, and served as Appeals Judge in Workers' Compensation. And whereas during the course of his long and distinguished career, Edward Ned P. Kirby served the citizens of Whitman and the Commonwealth honorably, faithfully, efficiently, and with dedication, championing such issues as economic development for Whitman, 
and the South Shore and the return of the commuter rail service from Boston to Plymouth. And whereas Edward and Pete Kirby served as an exemplary role model and brought honor not only to himself, but to the Commonwealth and the legislature, the Senate, his family and friends and constituents as well. And whereas the Board of Selectmen on behalf of a grateful community does proudly proclaim Saturday, June 24, 2017, Edward Ned P. Kirby Day in the town of Whitman, and on behalf of the citizens, does hereby commend Edward Ned P. Kirby for services rendered to the town of Whitman. Like to share with the rest of us about 
It was Ned Kerr. He said, you should know him. He's from Whitman. You live in Whitman. If you see him, tell him, thank you for the spike. I still have it. What Ned did was, spike from the old railroad, you would get. <coughs> you would go. <coughs> and go play them and give them to the people that helped him bring the tea. And my cousin Fred Salvatore still has that spike today on his desk and he's been retired. I just wanted to share that story. You know, Ned just, his goodwill just spreads regardless of where he is. And he was just a very fine gentleman. That's all I have to say. He picked up all those spikes, old spikes from the and took, took them to Ned, and Ned had them plated. And we sat down in the basement with a little electric pen. You know, one of the... Sketches. much as just a general statement about my dad, which was that he loved this town. He was born at home in this town and wanted to live here his entire life. And, you know, I asked him, I said, gee, you know, why didn't you go live in Boston after a while? No, I, this is where his heart was. And it was really because of the people of the town, his family history, the roots. But he just loved this town and the towns like it. And that was the, really the basis of his wanting to be in politics and wanting to serve. And he would love this event today. He'd be so honored, so touched. And I just want to thank you on behalf of me and, and others here, here, in the family. interrupting at this point because as you just heard June's favorite story about Ned with Mary Alice on the staircase on the back of a pickup truck <laughs> I have a little surprise for you yes. I have that story from Mary Alice's perspective oh. I did an interview with her <laughs> and she told me the story about how that all happened yeah so let's take a look at that now that's great well they were going to tear it down the old house was being torn to put up the bank <clears throat> And so uh, I found out that they were going to tear it down, an old place like that, an old staircase. So I w went over to the place and offered the men s to, you know, some money. So they said, okay, we'll, we'll give it to you for $25. And I said, sold, sold American. And uh, I didn't know what to do with it, though. They said, we'll cut it out of the house, and you get it out of here. It's going to the dump in the morning. So I immediately began to call 
uh, carpenters, and I finally found um, Sacconi. Uh, I think it was t t Fred Sacconi. And he said, oh, okay, I'll do it. He brought his, uh, they, cut, they cut it out of the wall, just sliced it right out of the beams, and he loaded it on the back of his truck. And I got on the truck with him, and we passed the right down, right down South Avenue with the, with the staircase going. Because, you see, we, we were taking it to the barn. We lived at 92 South Avenue, and so we had to take it to the barn right down the street. And when we were passing, Ned's mother came out of the beauty shop there, and she, she saw me, saw her daughter-in-law passing by on the truck. Also, Ned was uh, looking for votes that day for the county commission, and he was he was asking people to vote for him. So he looked up, and there was I on the truck waving to him from the staircase. <laughs> Well, we put it in the barn. You see, there was a barn. There was a barn attached to that building, and so we st st put it in there, and we tried to give it to the Congregational Church because it, the, the Jer Jared Whitman family were they were all Congregational people. So we tried to give it to them, and they said, "No thanks. We're building a we're building a parsonage, but it's it's a it's one of these things that all made up." It's a, it's a house that's all ready to just assemble. So they didn't want it, so we just kept it, and nobody wanted it, so we, we thought we'd build a house out of it. So we got the Mackey brothers, Toivo and Mackey, Toyo and Laurie, and uh, we met them at a party and said, hey, we've got a house to build. Uh, we've got a staircase, and we need a house to put it in. And they said, well, we're going to try that. So they came and they laid down a uh, subflooring here. Then they sat the staircase up on it and built a house around it. <laughs> that's, how, that's how it worked. <laughs> that's a very novel way to build a house. Exactly. Thank you very much. Mary Alice, you contributed so much also. Uh, I know every single thing you were right there with them. Mrs. Kirby, could you tell us what your opinion is of the dedication of this tree to your late husband? I was absolutely blown away and thrilled by it. I thought June and did a, an absolutely wonderful thing to let that tree for Ned. That concludes the dedication ceremony, but there's more to come still. Many of Ned's former colleagues in the State House gave me testimonials of what they thought of Ned. And that plus some of his colleagues from the town did the same thing, and we're going to run that for you now. I knew Ned first way back in the 70s. I met Ned uh, when he was a member of the Kiwanis Club. My father and grandfather were both members of the Kiwanis Club. And he would come to the meetings, and uh, we had a meeting annually at King's Castle on Route 18, my family's business, for years. And uh, Ned would come with Mary Alice and the kids and uh, get to know him socially and uh, later politically. Um, and um, Ned was, of course, a tremendous part of the social and political scene here in Whitman for many years, as people who have been in town uh, know. Um, most everybody probably came in contact with Ned in his political pursuits over the years. I did know Ned in my years during the um, 1990s in the State House. Uh, he was a great advocate for the 7th Plymouth District. He um, 
probably was most notably known for his support and his um, work on behalf of the Bay Colony, Owl Colony, I should say, rail line and, and getting the rail line down through Whitman and down to Plymouth. And uh, of course, we now benefit greatly from that. People who are in and out of town um, in Boston working and going in for pleasure uh, have a great benefit of the Old Colony Rail Line as a result of Ned's efforts. But uh, Ned was just a great guy, just uh, honest as the day is long, and just a great old Yankee who um, you could trust uh, if you asked him to do a job, or you were inquiring about a bill that was up in the state house that he was he was perhaps involved with or not involved with, he'd always get back to you and give you um, his straight up as to what he thought about the bill, whether he supported it or what reasons there might be for his um, lack of support for a particular initiative that be, were before the, uh, before the legislature. So just a great, great guy. And of course, Mary Alice was um, a steadfast companion for all the years that uh, Ned was in politics and in practice law here in Massachusetts. In, uh, in Massachusetts, and particularly in Whitman, uh, Ned's office was above the uh, on the second floor of the Mutual Bank building for years, and uh, had a, a very active practice for a lot of those years uh, through the 60s, 70s, and 80s. I'm very pleased to join in this tribute to Ned Kirby. Uh, Ned and I it became friends well over 50 years ago. We were elected to the House of Representatives in Massachusetts back in 1960, and we entered the House in 1961. It turns out that Ned and I, were, who were about the same age, similar backgrounds, both young lawyers, both raising young families, we sat side by side. And so we became good friends uh, in those days and remained that way as long as uh, uh, Ned was living. He was a man of uh, enormous faith. Uh, what he believed in, you just couldn't shake him from. He was religious, but not uh, he didn't carry it on his sleeve. But he had a very sincere and deep uh, faith uh, and that caused him to take positions which sometimes were unpopular in a political forum, but you always knew that what Ned said and what he did was what he really believed was the right thing. I think he was a great credit to the people of Whitman. He represented that community very well. Uh, again, in the Senate, Ned came back uh, to the legislature after having been gone for a period of time. He served his local community and uh, he served his county. And then he came back to the legislature in the Senate and he and I worked together over many years and through many, many difficult issues and some uh, very difficult times. Again, Ned Kirby was one you could count on. Uh, if he believed something, he stood for it and he fought for it. And he had some, some very strong uh, political principles and he just wouldn't give those up. And I think it's one of the reasons why he was respected by members of both branches of the, of the legislature, both the House and the Senate and both Republican and minority members. Well, as I think back, um, I think back the first time I met Ned Kirby it was when I decided I was going to run for state rep, my first entry into politics. And I was encouraged to meet Ned Kirby, the elder statesman of the, uh, the region, state senator. And uh, Ned and Mary Alice were very kind. They invited me into their home. And my first impressions of Ned is that he was a person of character and a person of substance. And uh, Mary Alice, uh, my first impression to Mary Alice, she was the, uh, uh, I describe as a, a person with the Southern charm, um, you know, but, you know, a, a great deal of uh, wisdom, you know, from her uh, life's experiences. Uh, Ned was one of my very, early, Ned and Mary Alice were my very early uh, supporters. And as I think back, I have a great deal of gratitude uh, for that. But as I got to know Ned and I got to know Mary Alice, you know, they're, they were much more than my first impressions. They were certainly full of love. Uh, they were full of great kindness. They had a great sense of passion and compassion for uh, other people. 
Uh, I went often to uh, Ned for counsel and advice in the time that I served in the uh, legislature, and he was always very generous uh, with his time. Uh, Ned took on many tasks during the course of his life, and he did it with um, you know, a great zeal and great uh, passion. He was a person of principle. Uh, he really brought honor to what is uh, public service and elective uh, office. He is you know, somebody that I think about as kind of the stature of um, you know, what good public servants uh, should be all about. So all of Ned's uh, former colleagues um, have felt the same way. And I know Andy Card, um, you know, a former state representative who was very, very close to uh, Ned, you know, uh, shared those thoughts with me as well. So he has done a lot uh, to make government a better place. He is a great role model for others to emulate. And he has certainly been very passionate about the needs of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the districts that uh, he represented. Ned Kirby was always the consummate gentleman, the gentleman politician uh, who cared deeply about people, loved people, loved the political rough and tumble of life. Uh, but most importantly for Ned Kirby, his faith influenced everything that he did uh, in his life. His faith was first and foremost in all aspects of, of his, uh, his professional as well as his private life. And I referred to that uh, in his homily on the day of his funeral, that it was faith that drove Ned Kirby. It was faith that formed him and shaped him, made him the man that he was. And I think that faith helped him to deal with some of the struggles that come in every aspect of life, but particularly in the life of public service, to realize what is truly important, what drives the service that we give to others. And of course, I think for Ned, it's reflective of the great commandments, love God above all things and to love your neighbor as yourself. And for a gifted individual such as Ned, who cared deeply about his town, his constituents, his district, that great, those great commandments motivated him to do things that would help people, to help people realize that they truly were import, important in our world because they are gifts from God. And Ned reverenced that in his work, again, both in his professional as well as in his private life, because the Ned Kirby that you saw in public was definitely the Ned Kirby that you saw in private, a man of genuine warmth, genuine caring, genuine concern for his fellow human being and wanting to make a difference in the world in which he lived. I've told the story before, but Frank and I both had the same experience with Ned. Oh no. We, he was the first person. <laughs> Do we want to tell no. this? No. <laughs> okay. he, was, he was the first person that welcomed each of us at different times to the town. Really? We, we, at church. He ran to us at church, introduced himself, and that was it. I mean, he was a welcoming oh. committee to people going to Holy Ghost. He's a, a terrific guy, and I'm really looking forward to Saturday. Uh, the big thing I remember is, is uh, uh, Ned getting involved in bringing the railroad, MBTA, the train back to Whitman. And uh, I helped him with that. I got involved in part of it without even, you know, um, just volunteering a little bit. And then uh, I had my own printing operation, uh, print shop and stuff. And I, I did some printing for Ned. And then uh, it, that worked up to, you know, some of his lawyer things. And then... Uh, that worked up to the train, and you know, uh, prior to that, back in the early 70s, I, I was worked for a structural engineer company, um, designing bridges uh, for the highways, and and we started designing bridges down through Quincy, Braintree, etc. for the rail line, which I never thought would ever connect to Whitman. It was, uh, you know, Whitman was way down, uh, <laughs> way down south at that point, and. Uh, you know, it was, uh, it just kind of all worked together and, and, you know, when Ned started with the with the train project down here in Whitman and uh, through the, the state house and what have you, getting the funds and, and so on, it just kind of uh, materialized that we had a, a general interest and, in, uh, you know, I had a lot of good times with, with, with Ned and, and Mary and, and uh, uh, it, uh, you know, he was just an awesome person, and uh, then came the uh, the actual happenings and and the the rail lines and everything being reactivated and and uh, um, 
you know, the, the old firehouse here in Whitman down the other side of the tracks being closed down and, uh, you know, just all the various things that, that happened because of the train. And uh, we took, I took the, uh, the first original ride into Boston to the State House and, and uh, the whole big, um, uh, you know, gathering of people to, to uh, symbolize the, the service coming down to the South Shore. And then it, now it's expanded down through Middleborough and what have you. So, I mean, it's all part of, thanks to Ned Kirby, that, that we have the service here in town. And that has helped population and, and business and everything here in Whitman. So it, it you know, um, it just, uh, he was an amazing person. He had a, he had a nice eyesight for, uh, you know, turning the town around a little bit and, and uh, improving and sending it off to a, to a uh, you know, a great opportunity. And, uh, you know, in his later years, he kind of retired and hung around the house, what have you, and did some, some small things around town, uh, kept active here in town. And, and uh, then, uh, you know, he, he was always proud that he was able to get the train back here to, to Whitman. I've known Ned for over 60 years. Uh, I think he went to Holy Cross College, graduated from Holy Cross. And in the meantime, back in the 50s, uh, I did not know him that well, but I did meet him one time in the Provost Marshal's office down in Fort Dix. We both were on the service at the same time. He was the Provost's office, and I was uh, at the time waiting as a holdover for going to overseas. And I was, uh, in the meantime, I was uh, working for the MPs, and I was bringing a, printed pris a prisoner in to uh, be tried, and that's how I met Ned. And we had quite a, quite a conversation at that time. In the meantime, he and I uh, got together through the years, uh, got to know each other through our, our uh, children. I have four sons, and he has uh, one daughter and two sons. We were in the Cub Scouts together. He was always uh, very helpful for that. And uh, we thought uh, we worked together on a lot of projects. And through the years, we were very involved in the church both Ned and myself. He was always very active, very honest person, and I enjoyed uh, his company very much. We took a trip to Ireland back in the 80s, I think it was. It was very interesting. We went with the church, and Ned and I went, Mary Ellis and my wife Rosemary went together. And uh, on the way back, he decided to bring some peat. So he brought some peat back into the country to, uh, for his fireplace. I always remember that. Ned and I and uh, my uh, wife and Mary Alice, we used to always have th uh, St. Patrick's Day together all the time. Mary Alice would make uh, the corned beef and cabbage, and uh, we would go up there and enjoy nice corned beef and cabbage every St. Patrick's Day. It was a real thrill and uh, very enjoyment, especially in Ned's last years. But I found him uh, to be a very honorable, good person, uh, he was on, as you know, a very staunch Republican on his, uh, on his side. Of course, myself, I was a very staunch Democrat. We used to have some good arguments every now and then, but always friendly. He was a member of the St. Vincent de Paul Society with myself and I, and myself. He used to uh, help uh, get the bread from the Stop and Shop and uh, some of the other outlets in town three times a week. He's very helpful to St. Vincent's and... Uh, a very proud member as well. He also used to help out on a lot of uh, food drives and uh, anything that has to do with the, with the town. He was very much involved. So we'll miss him very much. One more thing before we end. Mary Alice, during the interview I did with her, expressed to me her opinion of what Ned would have thought of all this. And that's what we're going to wind up with now. Ned would have been so touched to, to see the love that came out that day. It was a day that it was just love. He loved the town, and it seemed that the town loved him. And it was a thrill for everybody, for a whole family. And to see the people there, all the old friends, 
It was just beautiful. I was very grateful.